coming up on the show, we'll look at the latest in intelligent office app experiences, including new capabilities in Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and Outlook, as well as updates to personal work analytics. We'll look at the newly released browser-based experiences, including the new customizable app launcher and great additions that help you get work done while on the go. Once again, by Ben Walters from the Office Apps team. Welcome. Great to be here. There's been a lot of great updates to Office 365, really spanning the desktop, the browser, and the phone. Can you give us a look? Sure. So let's start with some of the intelligence-based capabilities of Office. If we think about the Office core authoring applications, they're really there to help people create beautiful content. And we used to historically use agents like Clippy to allow people to find help topics that would give them access to features. We evolved that into a more natural language service that would give them Tell Me, so they could then find features directly in the product. But as we've moved forward, we can now start to infuse the power of the Microsoft Graph right into the product to help people create more beautiful output quicker. One of the features we released with PowerPoint a little while ago was a feature called PowerPoint Designer. We've continued to evolve that service on the back end to make that even more useful for people. So to access it, I'd simply go in and insert a couple of pictures into my presentation here. And I've got a picture of Elon Musk and a Tesla Model S. And as I insert those, you'll notice PowerPoint naturally overlays those images. But the designer service kicks in and starts to present me with these beautiful slide designs that I can start to then use to, to make my slides look beautiful no matter what's happening. Now we're using some really subtle intelligence features in the background here with these designs. So as I click through these, we're using salient region detection to ensure that the focal point of Elon's face and that Model S car are actually coming into the phone no matter where they are. We're also assessing color palettes across those images as well. So the other elements in the slides feel like they're part of those images and feel like they're part of that slide design. Now we've again continued to evolve that service even further with things like more densely populated slides with text. So as I move down to this other slide here, I have a process flow for how to make the best fresh press, press coffee. And as I look at my slide designs, we now have smart art objects to help you make these beautiful layouts that help get that process flow across while still looking beautiful. Right, one of the harder things to do is actually get these text-based slides to look great, but I know we can do even better by using the cloud in terms of getting started with the new presentation. Yeah, and one of the things that's the big challenge for creating these slides is how do I get past that cold start mentality? With PowerPoint Quick Starter, we can use the full power of the cloud to build a new presentation outline. So we access this from the template page, and keeping in the vein of Elon Musk and, and electric cars, I'm simply going to go and search for that. So electric cars is my... Uh, is my term and I'm gonna hit search and using the power of the cloud we can now pull back content and information to go and build my presentation. I go and select the different sections I want in my presentation. Maybe I'm gonna go and uh, select a couple of different ones here and hit next. Select a template and then what will happen is PowerPoint will go and talk to the Bing Knowledge Graph to bring back all of that information and build that slide outline for me. That's right, and we're really pulling in some great images here from Bing and kind of the cloud services. Yeah, but it goes a step further as well. So as I go through some of these slides, I get a beautiful table of contents. And as I start to drill into some of the more topic slides, I don't get the actual information, but I get prompters on things that I should talk about. So if I'm looking at economics, maybe I should talk about price or maintenance or safety. I can look at the risk of fire or vehicle safety. So it's actually giving me all of that information I need to go out and further flesh out my presentation. It's really a huge time saver, especially if I'm creating presentations, but I know we're doing more even if you're going to start creating documents, say in Word. That's right. So one of the other areas that we uh, recently announced was a feature called Word Tap. And as we start to think about really bringing the power of the Microsoft Graph right into the authoring applications, Tap is one of the areas this shows up in a really big way. Mm -hmm. So I have here a document, and we know with Word we tend to use this to build reports and collate information from other sources. And on the Insert tab, I can actually select um, Document Item. And this goes out and talks to the cloud and brings back all of those recent documents I've been working on. And the beauty is here is I can actually drill into something like an Excel graph and start to see all of the different charts that are in that document and simply click to insert those. Now the beauty is these graphs are not just images, they're the actual object. So as I select that, I can go ahead and change the design and the color layout to match the document that I'm working on. That's the same way I would if I had have done a copy or paste or inserted a chart directly in, but in a much quicker way. So this is really pulling all the content in from the most recently used document list or MRU that you've been working on really taking those graphs and things that, it, that Delve can pull out and putting them right there on the right hand flex pane. That's right, that's right. And still honoring all of the security and the controls that we have. So nothing there that I don't already have access to won't show up. We've also continued to evolve Word to help me create more comprehensible documents as well. So if I move over to another document I have here, we can see here we have all of the standard spell checking experiences that I've seen before. And if I, for example, right click on principle, I now not only get the uh, 
correct spelling of the word, but I get the definitions to make sure that I have the right word in place there as part of that. We've also gone a step further with machine learning to help understand people's writing styles and help them create more professional documents. So down here I have a, a couple of different examples. So for example, wordiness and redundancy. I have a, a sentence here that says her backpack was very large in size. If I go ahead and right click that, you can see that Word is actually suggesting that I use more concise language. So maybe I can change that down to her backpack was just very large. So some of the other examples we can see is where we have more informal language or colloquialism. So we see I have a sentence here that says we have comfy massage chairs in our focus rooms. If I right click that, it's going to suggest to use more professional language like a we have comfortable massage chairs in our focus rooms. We can also target things like gender specific language. So here I have uh, the state should hire more policemen. And if I right click that, Word will actually go through and suggest to say the state should hire more police officers. So these are really useful ways that we're using machine learning to be able to understand language and provide better suggestions to create better documents that are more easily understood. Right, so we've seen now PowerPoint, we've seen all the great updates to Word, but how about Excel? Is there anything new there? Yeah, so with the new Office add-in platform, we've actually seen a lot of third parties create great tools and add-ins for Excel that allow us to take advantage of Azure Machine Learning and the power of the cloud. You can see here I have an Excel document that's got uh, some text-based responses in feedback that we've taken from Facebook or other sources. But with the uh, Azure Machine Learning add-in, I can actually run text sentiment analysis across this data and start to get a score based on those responses. So what I've got here is all of my comments, and I actually have roughly 1,600 rows of data in here. And I'm simply going to go ahead and run a text sentiment analysis in the cloud over that data. And within a couple of seconds, you'll see I actually have a score and a positive and negative sentiment analysis come back over that. As you can see here, things like great, it's perfect, gives me a high confidence score that that's a positive sentiment. But as we start to get to things that are a little bit harder to assess, like easy but not so good, where I've got positive and negative words mixed, mm -hmm. we can actually go through and assess that, and it's given a negative response with a, a negative sentiment score on that. Right. So we can see some of this data here is geo-referenced. And with the new map chart visualization, I can actually take that data and map that out over a map of America using the charts right within Excel. And you can see that loads up and gives me this beautiful visualization that, of course, I can interact with the same way I do with any other chart within Excel as well. So it's a really great way for me to be able to revisualize data in a, in a better way. It's really great seeing all those updates to PowerPoint, Word, and Excel, but mail is another area where we've been applying intelligence to your, your work life and really scheduling things and getting through all the mail that you receive on a daily basis. What's new there? Sure, so let's move over to the Outlook uh, Rich application. One of the first things you'll notice is we have this new Focused and Other Inbox. This uses machine learning to assess the way I re respond to email and read email and brings the things that are important to me to the front so I know what to process first. The beauty is, is I can directly train the system on this as well. So if I get a message that's important to me, I can easily right click that and select to move that to Focused or move that to Other so I can deprioritize or prioritize email as I like. Now, one of the things with email is it's one of our primary modes of communication. We're never sure if people are actually reading the messages we send. Right. And so I have a message that I've sent out to some people on my team earlier today. And with the infusion of My Analytics right into the Outlook client, I can simply click the My Analytics tool to see a new task pane that gives me an assessment of who's read that email. I can see at this point, 40% of the people I've sent that email to have read that. I can see how many people have replied, forwarded, and how long it took them to get to that point of read. The great thing is I can link right into my personal analytics to go and get deeper analysis of how I'm spending my time throughout the day as well. It's really handy compared to maybe some of the read receipt things that we did before, but is this on by default? Yeah, so this is part of our E5 offering and really helps teams work better together and helps drive better culture in the way people are working as well. So there's a lot of updates really across the desktop that we've just seen, but let's switch gears for a minute because I know we've done a lot of work in terms of making the browser also more customizable as you use Office 365. Yeah, so you'll see that as I come into uh, the browser view here, I get all of the applications that I use frequently available right there on the home page. And as I scroll down, I can see all of the recent documents that I've been working on, the OneDrive folders that I've been working in as well. So I've got all of that information available to me the moment I log into the Office 365 portal. We've also made it easy for people to customize their experience in the app launcher. So as I come up into the app launcher here, you'll notice that I have all of my apps laid out the way I like. And I can actually go and change these as well. So if I decide that mail isn't something that I want to work on as frequently, I can move that to a lower point in the app launcher. Maybe I want to go and make the OneDrive icon a little bit bigger because that's something I look for a lot. So I can go ahead and resize that to a wide icon, making it really easy for me to have all of those apps that I use day in, day out available at the click of a button. You can also see we have third-party applications pinned into my app launcher as well. And these can be ones that I've added or things that my administrator have added as well. 
So you can also see at the top I have my home, I have new applications that my admin may have pushed out to me, or I can get a list of all the applications that are available in Office 365 right here in an easy to see manner. One of my favorite features is actually the ability to search through your content right from the homepage. Yeah, so we've actually taken the power of that Tell Me engine I was talking about before and made it even easier for you to find features and functions within, uh, within Office 365. So for example, if I want to create a calendar appointment, you can see I can actually go in here and say create calendar and it actually returns compose calendar. Now the beauty is if I click on this link, Outlook opens up and it also takes me straight to a new calendar appointment to create. So it's a really beautiful way for me to be able to get access to features within Office. Also some of the features within Office 365 that we don't always play with like theming my experience. So if I decide to come back into help here and type in uh, theme, you'll notice I get in that task pane there, the ability to access that theming controls right within Office 365 uh, at the click of a button. So really great tools to help me better be able to use those tools on the web and help me be more productive. So a lot of great updates on the, on the client apps, a lot of, on the browser that we can do in terms of customizing our experience, but you've got a phone here, so why don't you tell us about all the updates on the phone? Yeah, so one of the things is we spend a lot of time on our devices and helping people be more productive on the go is really key. You can see here I have my Outlook application open and I actually have this email that's come through about my flight from uh, Prague, or flight to Prague, sorry, from, uh, from London. And as I click into that email, these are types of emails we get day in, day out that are kind of hard to read because you know, detail is really kind of buried down in the text of the email. But with the new action card feature of the Outlook application, I can see all of that key information brought right to the top of the email. So you can see here that my flight to Prague has all the information that I'm leaving from London, the time I'm leaving, what time I'm landing in Prague. And if I drill into that event, you can see additional information about where I'm leaving from. And of course, if I was close to the check-in date, I could go and fire off the check-in process right from within the application as well. So one of the other challenges when we're on the mobile device is how do we schedule appointments effectively? So I've moved back to my calendar here and you can first of all see that I have these beautiful icons that allow me to see at a glance what's happening throughout my day. Mm -hmm. But I wanna go and schedule an appointment with Alex. Um, so I'm gonna come in here and say that we're gonna have a coffee. Uh, I'm gonna select Alex as my recipient. And you'll notice that as I go to schedule my time, I actually get the uh, times that are available and not available highlighted in red for me. So all I have to do to find the time that suits myself and Alex is just to drag the appointment down until it turns green. And the beauty is here, there's no more back and forth on you know, when's Alex available and when am I available. I simply find that spot in his calendar quickly and easily right here from the mobile device. It's really great seeing that on the phone. I know that we've really looked at the desktop, the browser and phone to help uh, optimize our productivity and really save a lot of time, but what's next? So as you saw, the power of the cloud really helps to open up a ton of new immersive experiences to help people create richer content and have better access to the things they need on the go. Not only from the perspective of leveraging the underlying service intelligence, but this also gives us intelligence and telemetry that we can use to improve the experience for people overall. So there's a lot more to come as we continuously innovate on features that'll help you save time. So really a great lightning tour of all the new Office app experiences, but how can people at home try these today? So all of the desktop features you saw today will be available as part of your Office 365 Pro Plus subscription. The browser features we saw will be available across all Office 365 versions, with My Analytics really being key as part of E5. You want to make sure you're on first release, as many of these features will be coming to your tenants soon. And as a tech enthusiast, you can also stay ahead by subscribing to our Insider program. So thanks for joining us today, Ben, and also keep watching Microsoft Mechanics for all the latest tech updates. Goodbye for now.